So today we're doing a video a little differently, a little different. So we're outside and I wanted to do a series on inexpensive like budget lenses because we always see all these, I want to say YouTubers and tech guys are always doing these reviews and talking about these lenses that they have. And then of course you're like, oh, that's an awesome lens and I want to go get that. And then of course you go look at it and the lens is like 2000 or $3,000 and you're like, uh, no awesome and I'd love to have that but I don't have that kind of money what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a series of videos in regards to some of the lenses that I've bought over the past year or two and that first one is going to be this one right here actually this is one of the few lenses that I've bought brand new I buy a lot of used lenses because you can a lot of times get nicer lenses for cheaper especially if a replacement lens comes out like the mark ii or whatever and these are going to be all canon lenses you'll also notice that i'm shooting on a canon rp so that's primarily uses rf lenses but i almost completely use ef lenses and the reason is is that if i decide to get a camera that doesn't accept rf lenses i can still use those lenses on it for instance i have a canon m50 which means with an adapter, I can use all these lenses on that body as well. So I like the fact that I can spend a certain amount of money and get a lens that I can use on multiple cameras. Today's lens, again, new, is the 70 to 300 II. Really, really like this. And I'm not gonna show you too much, but kind of a cool lens, kind of an all-purpose lens. And what we're gonna do is go out and take some video, some 1080 video, some 4K video with this. Uh, as well as some photos at 70 kind of midway through the lens so about 150 to 200 and then at full 300 just to see what the quality and what we'll do is we'll go up to the computer and take a look just to see what we think of them and I think that'll be good so we're just gonna walk around the neighborhood because again we're at that time now where we're talking about distancing and not going out around people so we don't need to do anything fancy we can shoot here right in the neighborhood yeah, there's a neighborhood right there. So I'm gonna go out and take some pictures and some video. All right, let's do that. Where am I going? This way, this way is where I'm going. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is actually shoot some video because primarily I'm going to use these for video and I'm going to take a shot of something as simple as this tree we're going to do a wide and I'll let you see how far the tree actually is a wide and a telephoto we'll do it in 1080 and then we'll actually do it in 4k because hopefully you can see what the difference is uh, I'll put some audio behind it because that'll make it a little more uh, exciting for you guys and uh, then we'll come back and take some pictures Okay, so the other thing I want to do is, because this is a big zoom, really the question is how close can you get? Because a lot of zooms you have to be quite a ways back. So I got this at full 300, and we're gonna take a picture of the, kind of the moss on the tree right there. So right now we're about, I don't know, seven, eight feet away. So we'll take a photo here just to see. We're gonna take it a step closer. That's about two to three feet. 
decent. That's at full zoom. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's go in. It's cold and uh, oh, I need to get warm. So we're gonna download these, not a lot, but the, the files, so the video and the photos. And we'll take a look to see what we think of this uh, 70 to 300. All right, let's go inside. Oh, I should, I should be wearing pants. That's what I should be wearing. All right, my friends, well, we're back in the house and I've got the lens taken off and my Canon RP back up here shooting. Hello, hello. Uh, just so you guys are aware, it does not come with a lens hood. So if you are looking for something like this, it, it is something that you have to buy extra. I actually went on uh, Amazon or eBay or something like that. I'll see if I can find where I bought it. And uh, I bought this one, it's a JJC, based on the LH-74B, which is the Canon model, but works good, fits perfectly. You can see it here. I need to put it on, nice and simple. Now this thing looks just massive, right? That's, that's, that's large. Tell all your friends. Anyways, we'll put this, we'll put this over here. What we're gonna do is, you've seen a couple of the photos and videos just pop up on the screen while I was shooting, because I did that for you. You guys saw some of the video up at the beginning and what I'm gonna do, and you guys can see that the video, you know what? One of the big things I find, and this is something I'm gonna throw out there, I find that I wanted to make these videos really in regards to a lot of us that are hobbyist shooters and are you know, producing videos or making videos to go up on YouTube. So is there gonna be possibly some extra distortion in the corners? Yeah, possibly. Definitely more so than if you got a pro lens, but really, is it even noticeable? And, and I don't think it is. Now, the footage that I put up at the beginning is all raw out of the camera, it's untouched. Now, the one thing to be aware of is I do run a really flat profile on my camera. So it is something that you can download if you have a Canon camera. I'm not sure if other brands have this available. So if you can shoot in a log or a flat or like the Canon M50 and RP can't or don't have those abilities out of the box, tell us something. Telecine, I think. I'll put a link, wherever. I'll put it, it's gonna show up right here. They actually have a downloadable profile that you can put in your cameras to give you this really super flat profile, which allows you to color grade it beautifully. Motion, I got movement in the backyard. It's planes flying over top. Let's go look at some of the photos, because again, we showed some photos, but first off, we're gonna bring up, we're gonna bring up good old Lightroom here. Okay, so this is pretty standard shot. This was sh this was shot at, uh, I think, full zoom. We can bring up some of this metadata here. So this is in a raw format, of course. Uh, full resolution, focal length, yeah, 300 mirror ISO 400. Okay, so it is the EF700 IS2. So if we look at this and we bring this into, let's just, so again, you can see that at full distance, for focus, we bring it even closer, two to one. So I think this may have been a bit of me. So one one hundredth of a second at full, maybe I wasn't as, that's a little better. It's not perfect, of course, but I am hand holding this. So it's not tripod shot, right? So we're not shooting from a tripod. Come over here a little bit more, see if we can find. Let's come back out here. So there's better right there. You can see there. So there I hit focus. So this is a simple shot right there. And one of the things too to be aware of, and this is something I always talk about because this is a, I think it's an, it's an F5.6. And a lot of them are like, oh, it's not a fast lens. Yeah, but it really all depends on what you're shooting. So for me, especially with a telephoto, 
I'm primarily going to be shooting it outdoors and it's probably never going to be much of a darker scenario than this. And that's plenty. I'm shooting like a C of a second at 5.6. ISO 400. Could I shot higher? Most definitely I could shoot higher. I could get this up. 32, 6400 ISO without question. But that's plenty sharp. You can get in here and we'll go back to that one to one. So there's that one to one right there. And if you look at the wheel, that's good and sharp. And again, it's a very flat profile. So if I were to take this and, and we'll, we'll keep it in there actually, back at that one to one, and even did something as simple as just to come in here and let's see what we can do here where we'll bring up a little bit of texture, not a lot, but a little bit, right? Just a, that's a lot. Bring up a little texture, a little bit of clarity. Do you want some dehaze? Uh, not very much. And then we'll come down here just to see it. Should be some sharpening in here. Find an area that's sharp. There's that wheel right there. Just so I can see it. Somewhere in there. And, and that kind of there, again, when you get in nice and tight, like that might even be a too much sharpening, but I'm just trying to show you guys what it can do. And if you zoom out here, like that looks, nothing wrong with that. That's plenty sharp. That actually may be a little, a little sharp. Let's bring the sharpening down. But that's nice and clear. You know, what do you expect out of a, a lens that's, you know, four or $500? I think that's great. And the depth of field on it, especially at full zoom. That's the other thing. A lot of people are like, well, it's only a, F4, F5.6, you're not going to get that real nice bokeh. I'm like, well, you get decent bokeh out of it because, of course, your bokeh and depth of field, one of the biggest things that adds to it is zoom and distance. So because this has such a big zoom range, when you're at full zoom, yes, you need more light without question, but you get a real nice blur on the background. Even the foreground blur is decent. And if you look at the road here, coming in here a little bit more, you can see how fast that blur front and rear starts and how shallow that depth of field actually is. It's actually not that big. I think it, it actually does quite nice. I think that looks really lovely. So super happy with that. Uh, clarity wise, here's a little shot here. These were some of the shots that I was playing with when I was shooting and getting a little bit closer. You can see there's close, closer, closest. And this one we'll, we'll look at here because this one actually you can see that blur come in here, but this is where it's at its sharpest, right in that center here. And there's nothing wrong with that. This is right out of camera. So if we play a little bit with this, just to get this up a tad bit, not a lot, again, just a little bit. And again, I'm just doing this to, to just to show you guys. Come back here one to one. Yeah, that looks, that looks nice. That looks good there, fit the screen. And you get that nice drop off as it exits out the side. You know, I really do like this lens. I find it actually quite sharp. For a, a lens that's $500, I actually have a 24 to 105, which is a much more expensive lens, which is double the price for sure. And it's F4 throughout the whole range. And I, honestly, I don't think it's any sharper at all than this lens is. I think both of them, sharpness wise, are very, very close to each other. I think this looks great. And the fact is, you know, a lot of times, depending on how you like to edit, for me especially, I'd be over here anyway, doing a lot of this like darkening on the outside. And any of that softening that happens around the edges is gonna get lost anyway. So again, not that big of a deal. Color wise, sharpness wise, I think it produces, it comes out really good. Now, some of this is the camera that you shoot with as well, right? So if you shoot with a lower end camera versus a higher end camera versus a camera with more resolution versus one with lower resolution, that's gonna play a little bit of a hindrance as well. But I do think for the fact that, like I said, this comes in around 500 and change Canadian, probably 400 and change US is my guess. I, I, I don't really know. Um, I think this lens is, is killer. And I just wanted to kind of show you this as well because I think this is super awesome. Uh, I actually, I'll close out of Lightroom for a second. I just want to show you one more thing here with the photos and I'm just going to bring up the photos application because I have them here. And again, you can see these are Canon EF 70 to 300 F4 through 5.6, the same lens. I haven't done anything with it. But if you look here for one, 
there's that nice depth of field separation. And again, that looks that looks lovely, right? There's that shot back and forth between the two. You guys get an idea of what that looks like. See if we can make that a little bigger. There it is there. And again, this is shot with a flat profile, so you are gonna be able to sharpen this. But there's that focus hitting rear versus foreground. And there's at full wide versus that zoom. So there's the difference from wide at 70 to zoom at 300. And you can see that come up on the side here where it shows you that information. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you in this lens, one of the big reasons I bought it, am I going to use it for photography? Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's a great secondary lens. A lot of times I'll bring like, like my 24 to 105 or a 28 to 135. I also like to have some zoom reach. So this 70 to 300 is great. But here's the big one. I'm going to start here. I'm going to bring this this shot up here. The IS in this lens is awesome. I don't even know exactly how many stops of stabilization it gives you, but it's it's fantastic. So here's some photos just so you can see it. Full res, uh, shot at 1 60th of a second. Nice and sharp. You can see where, where focus hit right in here. That's great. Next one, I went down to 1 30th of a second. And again, nice and sharp in there where it hit focus. There's cat hair here. I got three cats. That's, there's not much I can do to, there's cat hair everywhere. And last but not least, look at this. 1 13th of a second. I actually think this may be the sharpest of them all. Look at that, 1 13th of a second. Even there's detail on here. And it's probably just where the focus hit because I was in autofocus. But come on now, 1 13th of a second. That IS is smoking on that. Super cool. Now, last but not least, I'm going to actually play a couple extra video clips that I shot. These are non-color graded, just to have them up there for you guys. And that's coming up right now. Take a look, just be nice and fast. And now we're going to take those exact same clips. I'm gonna put a color grade on them really fast so you guys can see them. And uh, because again, with this video that's taken out of this lens right here, I'm pointing over here, but over here, because of that color profile, there's no sharpening, there's no color enhancements, there's, there's nothing, it is super flat. So I want you to see what it can look like with a bit of color grading and it's a bit of sharpening, which is something you would do with this kind of footage. That's gonna come up right now, but before it does, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you guys there. So this is the 72300 IS2, very cool little lens, and I'll put a link down below if you guys are interested in it. I think it's for the price, I don't know if there's a better zoom out there for it. I don't, I, don't, I just think it's, it's really good. Okay, my friends, uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It helps us, gets the word out, and, and, and as always, it is just super appreciated. My friends, stay safe, stay at home, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. More camera lenses. I got, I, got a, I got a shelf of them back there. So we're gonna go over them. Later, my friends. Thank you.